Hello, Dr. Payan. Hello, and thank you for watching. And today, uh, I, will, I will do something really cool. Namely, I will evaluate the integral of 1 over 1 minus x squared in two ways. And in the end, obtain a really cool mathematical identity. And it's kind of amazing because usually you use differentiation to get new mathematical identities. But this time, I will use integration. So get ready. And by the way, I want to thank Zach Lee for the idea of this, because I didn't come up with this on my own. Okay, so on the one hand, 1 over 1 minus x squared, that's a rational function. And who says rational function thinks, says partial fraction decomposition. So let me do the first method. Method 1, partial fraction. What this says is, notice you have this fraction, 1 over 1 minus x squared. That's the same as 1 over 1 minus x and 1 plus x. And the idea is to write this fraction as a sum of two simpler fractions, a and b. a over 1 minus x plus b over 1 plus x where we want to find a and b. And to do that, um, let's just put everything on a common denominator. So this is a times 1 plus x plus b times 1 minus x over 1 minus x times 1 plus x. And let's just gather everything in terms of the coefficients. So, if you expand this out, you get a plus ax plus b minus bx, and that's equal to a plus b plus x times a minus b over 1 minus x squared. And remember, we want this to be equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, in particular, because the denominators are equal, it would be nice, and again, it's a sufficient condition, if the numerators are equal. So, how about we have a plus b plus x times a minus b, or it equals to 1, but notice you can write 1 as 1 plus x times 0. And one nice fact about polynomials is that two polynomials are equal if and only if their coefficients are equal. So from this equation, we get a plus b equals to 1, and a minus b equals to 0. And of course, the linear algebra is in me is just tingling to use Gaussian elimination, but here we can actually do it, you know, directly, because a minus b gives you a equals to b, and then a plus b equals to 1 gives you a plus a equals to 1, which gives you 2a equals to 1, which gives you a equals to 1 half. So a equals to 1 half, and b equals to a equals to 1 half, so we get a equals to 1 half, and b equals to 1 half. What does that tell us? It tells us, in fact, that 1 over 1 minus x squared equals to 1 half over 1 minus x plus 1 half over 1 plus x. Here. So... 1 over 1 minus x squared equals to 1 half times 1 minus x plus 1 half times 1 plus x. Okay. But notice, this function at first is hard to integrate, but those two functions are much more simpler to integrate. In fact, this is one of the amazingness of partial fraction decompositions. Okay because we have integral of 1 over 1 minus x squared dx equals to 1 half of the integral of 1 over 1 minus x dx 
plus 1 half of the integral of 1 over 1 plus x dx. But those things we can calculate, so that equals to 1 half. Okay, because we have this minus, if we want to use a substitution rule, and it becomes minus ln of absolute value of 1 minus x. Okay, and oh sorry, I forgot. Just 1 over x, and then this one is easier to integrate. It becomes ln of absolute value of 1 plus x. 1 plus x. And again, all this plus a constant. But we can simplify this. Integral 1 over 1 minus x squared dx equals to 1 half ln of 1 plus x over 1 minus x plus a constant. This is what we got using partial fraction decomposition. Now, let's use a completely different uh, you know, uh, technique to do that. Namely, if you think 1 minus x squared Think 1 minus something squared. And for this, it's good to use maybe some trig identity. And here's sort of the clever insight. How about we just use, why not, uh, hyperbolic trig substitutions? So just write x equals to 10 of u. Nice to say, okay. 10 of u, then dx is sesh squared of u du. Actually have a friend called Sesh, and Sesh, this is for you. Okay. <laughs> so Sesh squared du, and why did I do this? Because then 1 minus x squared becomes 1 minus 10 squared of u, and 1 minus 10 is <laughs> Sesh squared of u, which tells you that this integral becomes much, much simpler. 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. Well, it becomes 1 over this thing. Okay, 1 minus x squared. So sesh squared of u. And then dx becomes sesh squared of u du. If you're still watching, this is where stuff gets exciting. Bang, bang. And we're left with integral of 1 du, which becomes u plus a constant. But remember, from x equals to 10 of u, u equals to arc 10. <laughs> Try saying that 20 times, okay? Arc 10 of x. What do we have? On the one hand, okay, maybe here, one antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x squared is one half of ln of this junk. On the other hand, another antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x squared is 10 inverse of x plus a constant. And then, what do we know about antiderivatives? Namely, two antiderivatives. They just differ by a constant, which tells you, in fact, that those two functions, they're equal except for a constant. So here's a consequence. Again, because two antiderivatives, they only differ by a constant, we get that 1 half ln of 1 minus x over 1 plus x. 1 plus x over 1 minus x equals to arc 10 of x plus a constant. And the question is, of course, what is this constant? Well, notice, this is an identity that depends, you know, uh, on x that's valid for all x. In particular, just pick a very clever value of x such that this is still valid. For example, x equals to 0. So if you plug in x equals to 0, you 
get 1 half ln of 1 plus 0 over 1 minus 0, which is ln of 1, so ln of absolute value of 1, equals to, <laughs> I'm getting sick of this word, arctan <laughs> of 0 plus a constant, but ln of 1 is 0, so 0 equals to arctan of 0. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Uh, tan of zero plus a constant. But the question is, what is arc tan of zero? So arc tan of zero equals to x. That's the same thing as saying tan of x equals to zero so, is cinch over cosh, okay, which becomes, if you want, e to the x minus e of minus x over e to the x plus e to the minus x equals to zero. The denominator is positive, always, you know, if x is real. So that's the same thing as saying e to the x e minus e to the minus x equals to zero. And that's the same thing as saying e to the x equals to e to the minus x. That's the same thing by taking ln as saying x equals to minus x which is the same thing as saying x equals to zero. So this whole tangent, or should I say uh, in, inverse tangent, okay, is just to show you that arc tangent of, arc tangent of zero is zero. So zero equals to zero plus a constant, which tells you that the constant is zero in fact. You know, da, 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 da. without further ado, <laughs> let me, oh, let me further ado. Let me give you the main result of today's talk. Okay, <laughs> arc tan of x equals to one half. Okay, ln. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> one plus x over one minus x. Absolute value. to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>